That was the, the one that, um, the second film was, um, lo and behold, the giant spider invasion. I call it the giant spider disaster. Incredibly bad special effects. We had a low budget. The budget was $300,000. If there was $10,000 available for special effects, that was a lot. So we had to find a, make, a way to create a giant spider. That in itself was one problem. But there were other problems. The picture was produced with, uh, believe it or not, it had four producers. I was one of, I was one of the four. Later on, we had a fifth, by the way. Uh, that was one of the problems, because you can't make a picture with five producers. It's impossible. Uh, the second problem was the script, the non-existence of a script. Even though there was a very devoted writer working on it, the rest of the crew or the executive crew wouldn't give him the opportunity to, to do his thing, so to say. And that was Bob Easton, as a matter of fact, the writer. But the, the story originated with a, a Madison former um, commercial filmmaker by the name of Richard Huff, who I understand later became a professor or a teacher at uh, the university in Madison. And of all things, he was teaching writing. Yes, as a matter of fact, there was a script, but it had nothing to do with the picture as it finally turned out. The script originally was written by Richard Huff in Madison, was rejected a few times, massaged a few times, rewritten a few times, and still didn't make it. So through some friends in Hollywood, and through the distributor, we agreed to um, engage Robert Easton, the actor Robert Easton, and the dialect doctor to uh, help with the script. And he had some pretty innovative ideas at the time. Uh, I think as he, Easton in, himself will tell you in his interviews, that um, the, the story, the basic underlying story, was really not something that could be taken serious. It had to be a tongue-in-cheek kind of humor or comedy. <clears throat> and I got the message, but Richard Huff didn't. Unfortunately, what happened is every time Bob Easton wrote something for this on the script, which, by the way, was not finished before we started shooting, uh, it would the, the pages that he wrote would go to the four producers who would pass it on to Richard Huff and Madison, who then would start rewriting Robert Easton stuff. So finally it would filter down to me, and we were at that point already in production. We started production of the picture. So no, I never had a cohesive, completed script from the very beginning of it. Got Not to mention the special effects, the horrendous schedule that we had, the tremendous heat that we had during that summer in Wisconsin. So there are a lot of elements that enter into the making of that picture that made it what it is. You know, what can you do for $10,000? So a friend of mine who was a semi self-made special effects genius um, came up with the idea, what if we took an existing vehicle, like a Volkswagen Beetle, recreated it, and made a body, the main body of the spider out of that. And that kind of, kind of took hold and we went ahead and looked for Volkswagen and we did it, basically. Uh, the biggest problem with that was that my, my good friend, Bob Millay, who was the, um, the fellow that did the, if the spider effects and built the spider, so to say, had a bit of a drinking problem. So by the time we get 12 o'clock and any day came around, he had already put away about a case of beer. So the process of making the spider was not only very slow, but very tedious. I was spending much of my time in Hollywood, New York, Chicago, and Europe. So I had a lot of friends in Hollywood, and um, one of my best friends was Steve Brody at that time, who again knew a lot of other people in the industry. <clears throat> but um, 
That was relatively easy. It wasn't a question of having to call an agent and say, I want this guy or this guy. It was a matter of personal referrals. Somebody saying, hey, why don't we use uh, Skipper Allen Hale? Hey, that's a good idea. Let's have lunch with him. We kicked it around for lunch and he wanted to do it. And that's how we got the cast together. Everybody, irrespective of what walks of life they came from, everybody that was there, including the, the names from Hollywood, they loved it there. I think we treated them well. We always had the best accommodations we could get, uh, good food, relaxing atmosphere. Although again, in Giant Spider Invasion, it was a matter of uh, a summer of 120 degrees of heat, a very small studio, very small, that was a 30 by 40 little insert stage as we call it, that had no insulation on the roof. So that when it was 110 or 120 outside, it was like 140 inside. And the hours were gruesome. I think we had a, uh, the crew, was up at six, and we never finished before mid-evening. Luckily, it was a non-union picture. <laughs>